the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. Look. I know that you enjoyed the first rounds of the Fruits of Spirit. I know you did. I know it gave you an opportunity to take a look and say, man, look at these fruit that we have to bear. And these are the fruits that we're bearing every day in our life. Come on now. Come on now, everybody. It, 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 it is a blessing sometimes when you can sit there and look at the fruit you're bearing. There's a blessing and look at the fact that you're not sitting there acting because, oh, I live in a country. This is where I go to church. You're not acting. You realize that the fruits of the Spirit, the characteristics of the Holy Spirit, are based on your nature and character of, of yourself and the Holy Spirit. What I'm saying is that most of people want to bear these type of fruits. That's what, these characteristics of the fruits of the Spirit. Most people, most people don't want to be around people that don't bear, that do the opposite of those fruits. And we know that you can look at the newspaper, you can look at, you can just look at the people around you. There's some people you don't have nothing to do with because they don't bear good fruit. There's people who go to church and jump up and down, run up and down around the, around the aisles and stuff, and still they act like a, a, a some of them. I ain't so. <laughs> I just saw. They act foolish when they go home, foolish when they go to work. In other words, they put on a show at the places where they want to be seen, but don't realize that those things, how often I go to church, how long I pray, how, how I can do my dance, you know, uh, Christian dance or, or you know, secular dance, but my point of saying is even actors and all those other people, they can act. And that's what we may have as a society where we act. But in reality, we need to be and learn to live and, and cultivate the fruits of the Spirit only with the Holy Spirit to help you. Now, those who don't believe, I, you, you, I, I, I just encourage you to try to cultivate those fruits the best you can as well. What fruits are we talking about? Just in case some people don't know what I'm talking about, I'll go ahead and bring these up for you. Because this is round two. We, we already went through all nine of the fruits of the Spirit. Now it's time to uh, go to round two. Covering those things. Just reminding ourselves. I think it's a good thing to remind that the image of God is not based on a, a, a frame of a physical substance. It's spiritual. And it's the image of the dear son that we are supposed to manifest in our life is by bearing these fruit. But you can't do it without the Holy Spirit. You can't do it as far as I'm concerned. You can't do it without Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So let's put that on the table right now. But after that, let's start looking at the fact is that once you receive Christ, then it's time to start cultivating the fruits in your life. Amen? So look at this. It says right here in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Ain't nobody going to give you a ticket for that. Ain't nobody going to come rescue you for bearing these fruit. And I just remind you people, long-suffering means patience. And a lot of us need to work on that. The other one is faith, meaning really faithfulness. That's another thing we want to work on because the fact is you need to be consistent and be faithful to the thing that you are you say you're going to do. You need to be faithful in your job, faithful in your marriage, faithful in your relationship, faithful at, at um, the things that you make commitments on. We want to work on those things. You want to pay your bill, pay your debt. You want to do the best you can, amen? And, and, and there's no law against those things. So that's the fruits of the Spirit that I'm talking about that we're supposed to bear. So when I say, have you checked your fruit today? Have you checked your love today? Have you checked your joy today? Have you checked your peace today? And I want you to know this. I think after the first round, most of us realize, hmm, <laughs> there's some, there's some uh, uh, cultivating that needs to be going on because you know what? 
I think it'd been easier for people to sit there and say, I go to church on Sunday, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a leadership in the church, I lead committees, uh, I'm a deacon, I'm a, I'm a pastor or a minister, uh, I'm a priest or I'm a pope or um, whatever the, the, the symbols of the leaderships of the things in church, people tell you and give you rules on how you're supposed to act and can dress and, and show up and how long you're supposed to pray and how long you're supposed to read your Bible and then all these things. And then you still find some people in the church not bearing these fruit. You can be a minister and you still bear bad fruit. Curse somebody out. Go crazy and beat your wife and knock her in the refrigerator at home. There's people sitting there, uh, you know, you've seen that. I mean, for there's people who got adultery and all that other junk, all those things, but they go to church, they 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 got that form of godliness, but they not bearing the fruit of the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And 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 you know what? We all came from that. Most of us, some of us, I ain't all of us, came from an environment where we were not saved, we did those things, okay? So that's, that's not unusual. What's unusual is that when we come into the body of Christ, then it's time to start cultivating those, those characteristics of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I, I, I didn't say you're supposed to arrive. I'm not saying the time you receive Christ, all of a sudden you're supposed to bear these fruits. I'm saying by the time you receive Christ, this is the time to now allow the Holy Spirit to cultivate those fruits in your life. Because <laughs> you want those fruits in your life. You want that love. You want that joy. You want that peace. You want that patience. huh? You want to be good. You want to be gentle. So that's what it was all about. I'm just telling you, it's, it's, it's good for you. It's good for me to cultivate those fruits and understand it's something that I can do whether I'm in church or out of the church building. Huh? I mean, see, see we confuse about being religious as formal godliness. The people need to see our paraphernalia, see our Bible, see our uh, music songs and stuff like that. We think that is what is important. Those are just, should be, what you call it, byproducts, if you want those to be. But you don't have to have that. You don't have to sit there and say, show people, oh, I'm, I'm, oh uh, hallelujah, God bless you. Because, you know, it's very difficult sometimes when you're doing, it, it, you know, the job. But see... God is not looking at the language, but the deeds and the actions that comes with us, the character, the nature, the Holy Spirit. Think about it. I'm giving us a break by letting us know <laughs> that you can be <laughs> yourself in the church building and out of the church building. And if you're not that way at your home and not that way at your job, now's the time to say, I got to cultivate deep things and I'm still need to be looking at I'm look, it's not gonna be religiously or spiritually deep. It's just being real. Love, that's not, that's not, has nothing to do with paraphernalia, titles or anything else. That doesn't have anything to do with the fact that you know the Lord. You should know, the, people need to understand that you know the Lord based on these fruits that you bear, not based on what you say. That's all I'm trying to say. So look at this. I, I'm going to go back in here. Look at this that, that Jesus gave us uh, in, in John. And, and I think you need to just realize that we got to bear these fruits. Have you checked your fruits today? Look at this. I already read the fruits of the Spirit. Like I said, we already got those, right? And we remind, it's good to remind ourselves. You need to walk in love. You need to walk in the God type kind of love, which is unconditional love. You need to walk in, you put away, excuse me, you will want to walk. The Bible says you need to bear these fruits. But I'm telling you, you want to walk in love. You want to walk in, walk in joy. You want to walk in peace. You want to walk in patience. 
you want to walk in gentleness. You want to walk in goodness. You want to walk in faithfulness. And you want to walk in meekness and in temperance, which is self-control. You want that in your life. There's people in jail right now because they couldn't teach you self-control. There's people who lost their marriages and relationships and because they couldn't be exercised self-control. Come on now. This is what you want. And it is not being religious, just being a be a person. You don't need the facade. You don't need to wear the paraphernalia. You don't need to impress people how many scriptures you can quote. You need to show your love, your joy, your peace. Come on. That is not religious at all. Look at the scripture it has here in 1 John 2, 7. And then the title, sub, sub, the title of subtitle in the Bible is called The New Commandment. This is what he said, brothers, I write no new commandment unto you. Come on, Jesus. But the old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which things is true in him and in you. See, I'm talking about it's, this, it's, it's true in us anyway. Because the darkness is past. And the true light now shineth where? In you that receive Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. He that says he is in the light, and look at this now, y'all, and hates his brother is in darkness, even until now. And that's those deal with people who sit there that, that parents have raised. If you raise your child to hate, you raise your child to walk in darkness based on these scriptures we just read in here. You raise your child. Let me come off the screen for a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure we get this across real quick. If you teach, I don't care whether you're black or white, I don't care if you're Hispanic or, or not. If you teach, teach your child to hate somebody because they're ethically different or because of the color of their skin, you are teaching them to walk in darkness. And that's not what God wants. Jesus came, he said he's the light of the world and we are supposed to be that light for him in this world because we want him to be manifested in us. And if you, I don't care how, I don't care what your prayer said, that's the word of God. If you consider you're going to be a Christian, go by the word of God. The word of God is that he that hated his brothers is in darkness until now. And you don't want to raise your child to hate anybody. But you don't got time to hate. Hate is like poison. Think about that. If you hate your brother, and I don't know, these are the same scriptures that have been in our country since 1776, and yet people still, for generations, raise their children to walk in darkness. And unfortunately, many have died in darkness. And that's a tragedy. People's souls put in jeopardy because parents teach generation to generation to walk in darkness when you're supposed to walk in light. So I just want you to get that. Let's use the scripture. That's why he wants us to bear fruit. And that's why we get upset when we see believers. They say one thing. They say they love Jesus. They say we are a Christian nation. But then we act like something in darkness. And the problem is people can't see Jesus. Not when you let darkness be the dominant factor in your life. Look what the scripture said. He that loves his brother abides in light. Now you can be deep and some of the people teach you, well, that's not, that's subhuman or whatever. You, you're not stupid anymore. It's 2021. So a brother is black, white, red, yellow, whatever you want to call it. Any ethnic group, they are brothers, especially if they receive Jesus Christ, their personal Lord and Savior, they're your brother. And it says right here, he that loveth his brother abides in light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness. That's what the word said. Look it up yourself. Read it yourself. He that, walk, he that hates his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth, meaning whether he's going to heaven or going to hell. He's going to hell if he don't sit there and walk, get out of that darkness and start walking toward that light. 
because that darkness has blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. That's why the humility comes in. My sins are forgiven. Yours are forgiven if you receive Christ. God has, by the fact, he saved the whole world. We just got to receive it. 13, I write unto you, look, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. So now, when we come into the body of Christ, we're supposed to walk in light, not in darkness. And if we're not sitting there bearing these fruits, we're walking in darkness. If you're sitting there hating your brother, especially if you never, if you never met somebody and you hate them, you, you, you walking in darkness, you're blind, and your parents are blind because they taught you to hate. And I'm telling you, that is not a subject with God. Have you checked your fruits today? Have you checked your parents' fruits today? And are you willing to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the one that brings those characters and natures out of you, and it's time for us to stop looking at people playing church and stop being a church and to be the church it's a bare fruit. Amen. I hope you enjoy this segment right here. We got, we going, we're in round two now concerning the fruits of the spirit. And it ain't a game. It's about life. Be what he called you to be. Let there be light in you by the commandment of God almighty. You are conforming to the image of his dear son and the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to bring in the past. You can't do it without him. But if you want to try, I at least encourage you to try. Amen? All right. I hope you enjoyed this segment, and I'll catch you on the next round. But remember, have you checked your fruit today? God bless. I'll check you later. Bye-bye.